So, hello and welcome to lesson 11 in our study of functional analysis, where we are going to talk about linear transformation or linear mapping or linear operators. Alright, so let's take some definition here. So, a linear transformation is a function from one vector space to another that respects the underlying or linear structure of each vector space. So, in other ways, linear transformations or linear maps or linear maps or linear operators preserve the structure of the vector spaces. So, they preserve the structure of the vector space. Okay. So, a linear transformation is also known as a linear operator or linear map. Alright. So, let's take definition 2, which is the main definition for a linear transformation. So, we let V and W be real vector spaces. That means they are vector spaces in the field of real numbers. Alright. And their dimensions can be different. And we let T be a function with domain V and range in W written as T is such that V maps onto W. So when we have this here, we say that T is a linear transformation if the following condition holds, right? So if for all X, Y in our vector space V, T of X, Y is equal to T of X plus T of Y. That is, we show that T is additive. And the second one is that for X in the vector space V and for any scalar in our field, T of R is equal to R T of X. That is that T is homogeneous, right? And in some textbooks, they combine these two axioms to be one. So we can combine these two axioms as T of Rx plus Ry is equal to Rt of x plus Rt of y. And that's the formal definition for linear transformation. So let's take examples. So the question says, let V be equal to W, which is equal to E prime, right? So um, where M is a fixed real number. And we have to show that T is a linear transformation, okay? And actually, I think one thing that you have to know is that, you see, in this question, it says, let V be equal to W, okay? So when you have V being equal to W, it means that the range of the transformation is the same as the domain. And when this happens, the transformation is known as what we call endomorphism okay so that means that this transformation is an endomorphism so to understand some of these things i advise you to read on the internet what isomorphism homeomorphism homomorphism endomorphism automorphism and the rest are it will help you to understand some of these things okay all right so we must show that t is additive and homogeneous right since we have been asked to show that this here is a linear transformation. So, the first thing is that we select x and y to be in E prime. And we calculate this. So, t of x plus y will be equal to m of x plus y. Which is equal to m of x plus m of y. And this is the same as t of x plus t of y equals m of x plus m of y. So, you can see that we've been able to show that t of x plus y is equal to t of x plus t of y. You can see that here. So that means that we've been able to show the additive property. So now, with the homogeneous property, t of rx, we know is equal to m times rx, which is equal to r times mx, right? And which is equal to r times t of x. So we've been able to show that this is equal to this. So we've been able to show that, yes, it is homogeneous. And so combining these two, that means that we've been able to show that T is a linear transformation. Okay, and so if you are given any function to show that it's a linear transformation, then you have to verify these two things for it. Okay, 
So that's T is a linear transformation. Now let's do the second one. So it says let V is equal to W, which is equal to E prime for X being in V. So we define f of x to be mx plus b, m times s plus b, where m and b are real numbers, and b is not equal to zero. So we have to show that f is not a linear transformation. So let's see that. So for the additivity, you know we are going to get f of x plus y is equal to b. It will be m of x plus y plus b, and this time this will give you m times x. This time this m times y plus b. So we call this equation 1. And you know f of x plus f of y is mx plus b plus my plus b, right? So this is the same as this and it's the same as this. And when you expand and add this, you are going to get, actually when you add it, you are going to get mx plus my plus 2b, right? And this equation 1, this equation 2. So you can see that since b is not equal to 0 in the question, it means Equation 1 and equation 2 are not the same, which means that this is not equal to this, right? So, since b is not equal to 0, it means 2b is not equal to b. So, f of x plus y is not equal to f of x plus f of y for all x, y in vain. So, f is not linear. Or, that's f is not a linear transformation, okay? Alright. So, the defining characteristic of a linear transformation, T, which has this function, V maps onto W, is that for any vectors, V1 and V2 in V, and scalars A and B of the underlying field, right, this condition holds. So, as I told you, you can combine the two axioms to just have this, okay? So, when you say something is a linear transformation, something is a linear operator, Something is a linear map. Basically, this is what we are talking about. And I know you know some linear operators or linear transformations. You've been using some of them, but maybe you might not know that you are using things like that. But at the end of this video, you get to know that, okay? All right. So linear transformations are useful because they preserve the structure of a vector space. So now let's talk about types of linear transformations. So linear transformations are mostly are most commonly written in terms of matrix multiplication. In fact, in finite dimensional spaces, the structure preserving maps are the matrices. So in finite dimensional spaces, the structure preserving maps are the matrices. So let's talk about linear transformation in finite dimensional spaces. So a transformation T such that V maps onto W from M dimensional vector space to N dimensional vector space W is given by an N by M matrix M. So take note of that. So note, however, that this requires choosing a basis for W and a basis for a basis for V and a basis for W while the linear transformation exists independent of the basis. That is, it could be expressed as a matrix for any selection of bases. So, what does this mean, okay? So, we will use examples to explain it, okay? So, um, we have a vector space in R2 and we want to transform it to R3, right? So let's see what the transformation is going to be, or the structure preserving map. So we have R2. So in R2, we can have T of x, y. We want to change to T of x, y, z. So we define a map on it. Then we get a function on it. Then we get H of x, i plus y, j. So we choose the basis for the V, which is i and j, since you are in two dimension. So this will be equal to x h of i plus y h of g all right and now we are transforming it to third dimension so we would have some a1 i plus a2 j plus a3 k all right then plus y times b1 i plus b2 j plus b3 k and this can be written as h of x y 
will be equal to a1 b1 a2 b2 a3 b3 x y so this matrix here this 3 by 2 matrix here is the linear transformation or the structure preserving map so when you have your final dimensional spaces right when you have r m to r n then the structure preserving map is a matrix m which has the dimension n by m so that was what we said okay so let's take a second example so the linear transformation from r2 r3 to r2 defined by t of x y z you know in r3 to x minus y y minus z is given by the matrix so it will be given by the matrix so you see we have x here so one minus one here zero and you could see that here it is r3 to r2 so the matrix is going to be of order two by three right so the z component here is zero then here is y minus z so x is zero y is one z is minus one you could see this is a three by a two by three matrix right so this is the linear transformation from r3 to r2 given by this that we this transformation that we had here so t can also be defined for vectors v equals v1 v2 v3 by the matrix product t of v equals the matrix m here and the vector we have here and that was the same as what we did here right so in finite dimensional spaces that's how the linear transformation looked like okay so let's take a lemma it says that if a is an n by m matrix with entries in r right so we're talking about the field of real numbers then the function t such that r and m maps onto r n defined by t of u equals a u is a linear transformation okay which is very simple to understand based on what we've done so far all right so you could see that since it is from m to n the matrix is the an n by m matrix so what you are trying to say is that in, in final dimensional spaces when you are trying to um, do a transformation from one dimension to the other one space to the other right always the structure preserving maps are the matrices and their dimension is always that of the um, range by that of the domain okay all right so note the range of the transformation may be the same as the domain i think i've made this statement already in the video and when that happens the transformation is known as an endomorphism or if it is also invertible then it is called an automorphism okay so now let's take a look at linear transformation in infinite dimensional spaces so linear transformations also exist in infinite dimensional vector spaces and some of them can also be written as matrices using slight abuse of notation known as infinite matrices right but however the concept of linear transformation exist independent of matrices matrices simply provide a nice framework for finite computations okay so we mostly use the matrices when you are talking about the finite spaces so let's look at some examples of linear transformation or linear operators or linear maps in infinite dimensional spaces which i know you are aware of okay so the first one we talk about is differentiation or the differential operator and you can see that when you want to differentiate something ddx alpha f of x plus beta g of x this is equal to alpha then dd of x f of x plus beta d d of x you can see that this relation here right is the same as what we said for the linear transformation so that means that the differential operator or differentiation is linear that's the reason why you've been hearing your lectures telling you that the linear operator and um, the differential operator or the derivative is a linear operator okay 
so the same as the integration of the integral operator it's also linear because when you're integrating this you can write it in this form and another example i'll give you in this video is a laplace operator when you find a laplace of this it's also this all right so you can find out more about our infinite uh, linear operators in the infinite dimensional space is okay all right so yeah that's going to be all in this video so we will continue in the next lesson so thank you very much and see you in the next lesson bye